All right. Well, guys, it's my pr uh, privilege to introduce Brandon Fox. Brandon's been in sales and uh, leadership for the past 20 years. His career started in the financial services industry at Morgan Stanley Dean Witter directly out of college, which he went to University of Houston. Go Cougs. He's won several awards as a first year advisor, uh, including being one of the top mutual fund sales uh, mutual fund salesmen in the country. He then found himself on the fixed side business working on for one of the top insurance marketing organizations in the country, selling annuities and life insurance to financial advisors and insurance agents, and as well as helping them grow their business. He's made, like me, thousands of cold calls in person and over the phone and recruited the number one revenue generator generating advisor that is still working with that company. He also negotiated contracts for two broker dealer relationships resulting in the company having their highest grossing year. In 2016, he uh, decided to pursue other business opportunities, which propelled him into the position of coach and sales trainer for Southwestern Consulting. He's an, uh, a native of Spring, Texas. He lives with, with his wife and nine-year-old son in Spring. He speaks to sales professionals all over the state and around the country for Southwestern Consulting. In his free time, he enjoys fishing and playing baseball with his son and going to concerts all over Texas with his wife. My pleasure. Brandon, welcome. Hey, thank you so much, Moose. That was perfect. It was excellent. That was exactly how I wrote it. So thank you. So let's see here. We're going to switch this up. All right, so everybody should be looking at uh, immediate results workshop. Somebody raise their hand if that's what they're looking at. All right, all right. So thank you so much for being here today, and, and uh, it's a pleasure to be amongst you. Um, the heat down here in Houston or, or spring area is, is brutal, but uh, we're getting through it. So, um, you know, I promise today, uh, I, I can make you one promise, that you're going to walk away with something, okay, if it's just one thing that you can implement into your practice uh, that's gonna make you better and make your team better. So um, let's see if my clicker there, all right. So to get started here, I want everybody to pull out your phone. This is the one time where I actually do want you to have your phone out and not necessarily just be paying attention to me, but text me your favorite emoji or your favorite gift. We'll just take a couple of minutes if everybody type in my number there, I'm gonna have you use it again later in this presentation, but I love getting new ones. So if you got, if you have one that, uh, that you think that perhaps I haven't seen, I would love to, love to see it. <laughs> I love it, David, that's good. That's good stuff, Vax. All right. I like it. Thank you. Thank you for the vote of confidence. I love it, Hannah. <laughs> all right. As you come in, I, I really appreciate you all participating. These are these are some good ones. Actual photo of mosquitoes in Florida right now. That's awesome, Ken. It's a pterodactyl, in case you guys want to know. So I appreciate you all participating. You know, the whole point of this is we have to have fun at what we do, right? We have to have fun, especially in sales. Sales, you know, there's ups and there's downs. And, you know, at Southwestern Consulting, while we take ourselves very seriously or take our job very seriously, we don't take ourselves too seriously, right? So I invite you to kick back with me today, take some notes and, and let's have some fun. I'll ask for uh, participation throughout. Today's presentation is Habits of top producers. So who would love to be a top producer? Raise your hand. Some of you I can see, some I can't, but just raise it high and be proud if you want to be a top producer. Okay, fair enough. That's right. Hopefully nobody's sitting there thinking, gee, I want to be a mediocre version of myself, right? <laughs> so we want to strive. We want to, we want to grow. We want to get better. So hopefully... I mean, that's why we're all on this call. I'm sure you all have a lot of other very important things to do. So in working with thousands of producers across dozens of countries, um, you know, 
all over the world. Uh, so we've learned that you have to have, you know, to be at the top of your game, okay? In order to not just meet your goals, but to crush them, you have to have mastery around three areas. So the first area that you have to have mastery around is your skills. So write skills on a sheet of paper. By the way, I hope, I hope everybody has a sheet of scratch paper and a pen, something to write with. I'll give you some, um, some cool tools that you can use here in just a bit that you'll want to write down. So, so when we do uh, this workshop uh, for your group, we bring these uh, materials out to you. And so we would have this sheet of paper for you to fill out. But you want to write skills, okay? So what are some skills that you need to be proficient at in order to be at the top of your game of sales? You need to be able to, you know, find and uh, develop uh, your leads, right? You need to be able to approach. You need to be able to, you know, find and develop a need. You need to be able to close with enthusiasm, right? These are all technical, learnable skills that you need to have in the game of sales. Answering objections, overcoming objections, right? Objections should be a very normal thing, right? It shouldn't be, uh, should never take anyone's by surprise that they're going to get an objection. So we work with a lot of groups on, um, you know, normalizing that aspect of their business. So the other area that you need to have mastery around is your motivation, okay? So most people think that people are born motivated. I promise you, Tony Robbins wasn't just born Tony Robbins. He's worked at it, okay? Motivation is, is we, we work at it and you have to have a long-term vision short-term goals you have to have an attitude of abundance an attitude of gratitude as we call it right a purpose bigger than a paycheck okay if you're just waking up in the morning and going to your job then you know job i've heard before is an acronym for just over broke if it's just a job or is this your passion is this your career is this something that you're really striving for okay the other area that you need to have mastery around is your systems, okay? So we are, you can, has anybody known somebody who is uh, maybe the best at sales, maybe highly motivated, but still doesn't, isn't successful and they can't figure out why? It might be because they don't have good systems in place. Systems like a good CRM to track your client client's information, keep track of conversations, Stay on top of your game there. Other systems might be your schedule. We work with tons of people on their schedule and, and maintaining, um, you know, the difference between a schedule and a calendar. There's a big difference, okay? So these are three areas that you need to have mastery around in order to be a top producer. Now, although we consider ourselves a training company, we don't just consider ourselves to only be that. What we're really about, truly at the heart and essence of what we do, is we're about changing people's habits. So write down habits if you've made your little triangle. So in order to change these habits, so give you an example. You know, I wanted to get back in shape. I wanted to start working out again. I know Moose, that was a, a, a big, you know, eye opener for you going through your experience. And so for me, in order to get back on that bicycle, so to speak, get back in the gym, I needed some accountability, right? So write accountability on the outside. Now I say that, but who woke up this morning and was like, oh my goodness, oh, I can't wait. Can't wait to have some more accountability in my life. Show of hands, anybody? <laughs> no, not many people, right? Not many people want that extra accountability in our lives, but you know what? That's exactly what we need in order to get out of our comfort zone and step out of our box a little bit, right? Our brains are designed, we'll talk a little bit about this later, but to keep us comfortable and keep us safe. But is that how we grow? Is by staying, staying safe and not having any accountability? No. So who are we, right? Southwestern Consulting. Uh, just real quick, show of hands, or you can just 
put a letter in the chat, something, anybody heard of Southwestern Consulting or the family Southwestern Advantage? So here in Texas, you might think that we would know all about Southwestern Consulting, but the reason we're Southwestern Consulting is because our parent company, Southwestern Advantage, predates the light bulb, goes all the way back to 1855. So, uh, our headquarters is in Nashville, Tennessee. So that's why we're called Southwestern uh, Family of Companies because uh, Nashville was in the Southwest at this time. So we've worked with 20,000, over 20,000 now people and now it's 18 different countries. You can see we work with some of the big names out there. We coach everyone from Fortune 500 CEOs to individuals that just wanna be the best versions of themselves and everywhere in between. So over these years, having coached some of the best of the best in the world, the brightest people out there, would you imagine that we would learn a few things from them as well? Of course, right? We practice what we preach here. So we're gonna go over the habits, three habits of top producers. So the first habit, top producers, is they are students of the game. Now, how many of you out there played sports growing up? If you did, you can either unmute yourself and shout out the sport or just type it into the chat and Dan can read off. What are some of the sports that we played? Baseball. Baseball. Anyone else played a sport? Moose Cricket. There you go. Any underwater? Football. Receiving? Football. Football. Yeah, okay. Coach. Dance, ballet, right? So, so what would have been the result if you would have gone up to your coach or your instructor at the time and said, you know what? I think I'm just going to sit this one out, uh, but I'm going to play in the game on Friday. I just don't feel like practicing this week. Or I don't feel like, you know, dancing or stretching this week, but I am going to dance in the recital on Saturday. What would your coach or instructor have said to you? Probably nothing positive, right? <laughs> so if they would even allowed you to do your dance or play in the game because you just had this God-given talent, what would your performance have been like if you didn't practice all week, you didn't put in the extra time? Would you have been at the top of your game? No. Okay. So how many of us are doing this in our professional lives? We're, we're showing up on appointments, okay? We're, if we're being honest with ourselves, we're not putting in the time that it takes to get better, to perfect our skills and hone our craft behind the scenes. We're showing up on appointments and, you know, we keep getting the same objection of, mm, gee, let me think about it. How many of us have, have felt that before? I know I have. Is that frustrating? Yeah. So if I ask you, if, if you're not putting in the time that it takes, what is that costing you? So in your coaching program, you know, our coaches help people drill, rehearse, come up with scripts, come up with a better set of questions to ask, right? Our coaches are going to make you feel uh, confident and, and competent in a variety of selling situations so so that you ultimately close more sales, right? Who wants to close more sales? Okay. So we don't have time to get into everything that you need to know about the game of sales to be masterful at it in this hour that I'm going to go through with you all. But if I can cover, you know, just one area uh, of your technical skills, give you an idea, um, you know, would that help you? Would that be a good use of our time? If I could give you uh, just a little something to hone your skills a little bit more, that'd be a good use of our time. Okay. So we're going to cover the cycle of the sale. So everyone's industry is, is different. I do. I, I understand that. I know that. But 
I assure you that the way that uh, your business is done should be, uh, the words might be different, but the way that you do business should be directly correlated to uh, this cycle. So the first step in the cycle to sale is the pre-approach. Pre-approach is simply the background information that you want to know about your customer before you contact them. Next step is the approach. So approach could be in person or over the phone. When you're initially approaching that person, calling them or visiting them in person, what is the ultimate goal of that initial contact? Somebody take themselves off mute or type it in. What is the ultimate goal when you first contact? What are you trying to do? Build rapport. Okay, part of it. So we're trying to set build rapport, but also we're going to set a meeting, okay? And in this meeting, we're going to ask questions to find and develop a need. So the next step in the sale, the cycle of the sale is called the introduction, what we call the introduction. This is a step where you're going to find questions, ask, ask questions to find and develop the need. Now, after you've found the need, client has one, what are you going to do then? Present the solution, right? So the next step in the cycle to sale is presentation. This is where a lot of salespeople get hung up, right? In between the introduction and presentation and waste a lot of time. Is there any need to move further into a presentation if, if the person doesn't have a need for your product or your service? No. So at that, at that point, the rest of the cycle, we're wasting time, right? How many people can identify this from either doing it themselves or their team, seeing their team get stuck in between these two areas? Yeah, absolutely, right? Then the next step is close. Always be closing, right? So we want to close with enthusiasm. Now, whether most people think that a close is a sale, right? Maybe, maybe not. Closing is bringing your prospect towards a decision, a yes or a no. Mr. Miss Smith, I would love for us to be a fit for you today, but I don't know if we are. And so we're gonna, I'm gonna ask you some questions and get to know you a little bit. And hopefully, you know, you like the solution and you move forward with us. But a no is perfectly acceptable. We just don't do maybes. Got a question in the chat here. Um, April wanted to know, is the introduction also the discovery? Yes, some people call it discovery. Some people call it the fact finding, probing. Yes, absolutely, good question. Hey, Brandon, I have a question. Why sure. do you say we don't want a maybe? And what's the solution if they give you a maybe? Good question. So, I mean, maybe it's just waste time. So we want to, and I'll, I'll cover something with you here in just a second in the, that goes towards the introduction that'll help us prevent um, objections from happening 90% of the time. But that that's essentially what we want to do. We want to make sure that um, we have everyone present and that we're getting uh, a clear, you know, yes or no from them, right? And a lot of people need help making a decision. People think, you know, sales can be a dirty word because there's people out there, you know, that, uh, that aren't doing sales the right way. But when you do sales the right way, it's simply bringing your prospect to a decision and no can be one of them. We'll talk more about it in a minute. So the next step is they don't always give us a yes or no uh, uh, answer, do they? A lot of times they give us a objection, right? We have to get used to answering objections. It should be very common. It should be second nature. And whether they buy from us or they don't buy from us, whichever route they go, what should we always be asking them for? Referrals, right? Who in here could use more referrals, introductions by people that you know and trust? Is there a better way to get business? 
than being introduced by, to, uh, from somebody else that has used your product or service or that knows you inside and out and knows that it would be a fit. But why don't salespeople ask for referrals? Oftentimes, the only reason they're not getting them is they're either not asking or they don't know how to ask. Okay. And we work with, with you on both and practice it ourselves. So once you get the referral, you do the pre-approach on your prospect, find out a little information on them. If it's a company, maybe how big they are, um, you know, how long they've been around. Then we want to call them, whether that's in person or over the phone. Then we're going to set a meeting, find, ask them questions, build rapport, ask them questions to find and develop the need. And if there's a need, then we're going to present a solution and we're going to go for the close. They're going to give us an objection then we're going to isolate that objection. Then we're going to reclose. And it goes back and forth, sometimes a few times, which we'll see. But at the end of the day, it's a cycle goes round and round. So out of these areas, okay, where do top producers say the sale is made? In the introduction or the presentation? Again, you can shout it out or put it in the chat. Okay, top producers all say that the sale is made in the introduction. Again, that's where we're finding, we're asking good questions, good probing discovery questions. Uh, we're, we're, we're listening more than we're talking and we're finding the need for that customer so we can serve them ultimately is what we want to do, right? So have you ever heard I need to think about it. Call me in six months. Hey, Krista, I need to talk to my boss or spouse. In my house, that's the same thing, by the way. Or, you know what, Isaac, it, I love it. I love what you have. It's just, it's too expensive. I can't, you know, I know I can get it cheaper somewhere else. Has anybody heard at least one of these in a conversation before? We all have, right? How many of us have heard all of these in the same conversation, <laughs> right? How frustrating is that? Now, the truth is they didn't not buy from you because they needed more time or because they needed to talk to their brother's cousin's sister's CPA or brother's cousin's nephew lawyer, right? Or they couldn't afford it. It's because you didn't ask the right questions to find and develop the need to move the process forward. So today, if you could learn, if I could teach you one simple way to remember how to ask the right questions, would that be helpful? Would y'all like to see it? All right. I want you to write down CLASP in a vertical line, just C-L-A-S-P. It's going to be an acronym, obviously. So the C stands for currently, okay? What is their current situation? So whether you're in insurance, mortgage, real estate, um, you know, manufacturing, lawyer, CPA, doesn't matter. Your client has a current situation or your prospect has a current situation. What is it? Also, what do you like, Mr. and Mrs. Smith? What do you like about your current broker? What do you like about your current CPA? What do you like about dealing with that uh, state planning attorney? A lot of salespeople are afraid to ask what they like because they don't want to know what their competition is doing well right? Who wants, who wants to bring up the competition? But it's really important for two main reasons. Number one, they're telling you why they buy. Okay. The other reason is it's a little reverse psychology in the sense that if we're asking somebody in the beginning of the conversation, you know, who they're currently working with, they'll tell you that, what they like about them, it's opening them up. They feel comfortable telling you what they like. They're going to talk to you and you're starting off on a positive note. 
But if they're telling you what they like, what are they also going to tell you? What they don't like. They don't right? like. What they, what they want to alter. Exactly. So A stands for alter. What would you like to change about your current situation? So I know you, you, you liked this about them. You know, what would you like to change? If you could change anything about your current situation, what would it be? I'm sure you've all heard the magic wand question. If you could wave a magic wand and, and change anything about your current situation, what would you like to change? And by the way, ultimately, this is the reason why they are talking to you in the first place. This is why they're sitting down with you. This is why they're talking to you over the phone. Again, I promise you, people have better things to do. They're not just going to, you know, chit chat with you because they're on the phone or with you. They're for, it's for a reason. We got, it's our job to find out why. S stands for signer. In addition to yourself, Mr. Jones or Mrs. Jones, who else needs to be present to make a decision today? So Krista, like you, like you asked me earlier in the introduction, so these are all questions that we're asking before we even present. So P stands for paint the picture. And so I'll paint the picture as you're summarizing this in the form of the if then statement. It might go something like this or if then question. So, you know, Krista, look, I understand you're currently with AT&T um you like their service you like the variety of services that they offer but right now you're getting terrible service um you can't get anybody on the phone um you are the one you're the only person that makes this decision and so you know if i could provide you the array of services that at&t does but be there for you when you need me and have better quality service would I have the opportunity to earn your business today? If you've classed them properly, what are they going to say? Yeah, of course. Okay. The reason we use clasp, by the way, is think of a clasp of a bracelet or your watch. It's not welded to your wrist. It's loose, right? But it's secure. So similarly, when we clasp our prospect, they're with us. They've bought into what we're saying. They're, they're, they've given us permission to move forward, but they haven't signed on the dotted line. So this is a great acronym for you or your team to understand some questions, the right ask, questions to ask uh, in order to find and develop the need. Is this helpful? Right on. So the second habit of top producers is they guard their self-talk. Now, I usually have my cards on me. So, you know, I'll be honest. When I first started as a coach, this one was a little uh, out there for me, okay? I, di I, didn't, I didn't think I had bad self-talk. I think I'm a pretty confident person. I don't think I'm the best at anything, but I think I'm pretty good at most things. Self-talk is what we say about ourselves to ourselves in a given situation. And our brains instantly go negative, okay? Our brains work against us, believe it or not. And we call these rationalizations, lies that we believe to be true about ourselves. Over time, we start to believe them. How many of us have made excuses of why we didn't get up on time? Why we didn't, you know, work out, why we didn't eat right, why we didn't make that call we're supposed to make, why we didn't do the things that we know that we're supposed to be doing. How many of us have ever walked out of an appointment and been like, oh man, why did I say that? I'm such an idiot. Ah, oh. we all have, right? But our brains don't, don't know when we're being sarcastic. Our brains don't know we're kidding. And over time, you're going to start believing that jump. So in your coaching program, if, if you ever decide to do so, 
Your coach is going to work with you on helping you identify these self-limiting beliefs that are holding you back. Okay? You have so much unlocked potential. I know each and every one of you has unlocked potential. I do know that. And so we have to stop limiting ourselves and we have to start catching what we're saying about ourselves to ourselves. You think uh, Jose Altuve, this may rub some non-Houston people the wrong way, but you think Jose Altuve had some negative self-talk in 2018? Yeah, he hit under 300 for the first time in his career in like five or six years. It wasn't the trash cans. He hit he hit well over 500 for five years up to that, okay? You think Tiger Woods has had some negative self-talk throughout his career, although he's hailed as one of the greatest golfers that ever lived. Tony Robbins has negative self-talk. The deal is they have people in their corner to help catch their negative self-talk and then change that into positive statements, okay? The third habit of top producers is they take action now. So I'm going to show you an ideal schedule. This is what we consider an ideal schedule. So I know what a lot of you are thinking. Brandon, listen, man. I don't live in the ideal world. I live in the real world. And there is no way I can, you know, plan my day out like this with this much detail. <laughs> is this giving anybody heart palpitations looking at this and thinking about, you know, this being your schedule? It did me when I first saw it. But I will part with you two principles, okay? Number one, if you don't know what a perfect day looks like, I assure you, you're never, or what a perfect week looks like, you're never gonna have. And the second thing is all of your time, all the spaces that you don't have filled in with income producing activities are gonna get filled in with junk. So real quick, I want everybody to take a moment have some self-realization, and I want you to rate yourselves. Now, I'm going to give you the, the scale, okay? You're going to rank yourself a 1 to a 10. A 10 is somebody that plans their week out the week before. You know exactly when you come in. You know exactly who you're going to call, when you're going to call them. You have time blocked out to check your emails. You've planned out your personal life. You know when you're going on, you know when it's date night. You know when you're going to take the kids somewhere. You plan out your exercise time. You plan study time. Okay? Everything is planned out so that when you come in Monday morning, you execute. You take action now on the things that matter most. These people, these tens, are able to be present at the end of the workday with the ones that they love at home, okay? These people are only pre are present at home when they're at home and when they're at work, they're tasked, they're on work, okay? Now, a one is somebody like one of our old coaching clients who got into coaching years ago, David Fitz, okay? When he got into coaching, at best, he had a to-do list and a calendar. But at the end of his to-do list was another to-do list. He always ended up responding to whatever was barking the loudest or flashing the brightest. These people are slaves to their email. If they even get to their email, they're unhealthy. They're not taking good care of themselves. They're stressed out. A lot of times they feel overworked, although that might not be the case. It feels that way, though. When they're home, they're thinking about work. When they're at work, they're thinking about home. That's a one. So everybody rank yourself from one to 10 and you can't be a five. <laughs> no fives. And if you could put in the chat and Dan, if you could read them off, just put your number. You don't have to put, you know, I don't know if it shows your name or not. 
but we have eights, sure. nine, seven, six, okay. all over the right. board, but everyone's uh, above a, a five here, I'd say. Okay. Awesome. So my eights, my nines, I'm not too worried about. My sixes and sevens worry me a little bit. Okay. Are we really being true to taking action now on the things that matter most and sticking to our income producing activities throughout the day? So again, this being an ideal schedule, if you Google right now a schedule, the first two words that you're going to see is Moose. Google a schedule for me real quick and then tell everybody what the first two words are. I see you're getting close. You got it or you want me to say it? Just wave your hand. Are you with us, Moose Man? Yes, sir. I am. Sorry about that. Is, is, so what does it say? So if if you Google schedule, all right. So I'll do it. I, I apologize, guys. No, nah, you're good. Doctor, my mom's. Everybody's calling me in. Oh, you're good. I saw you take yourself off mute. That's why I was waiting. I thought you were gonna say. So, what does it say, Dan? A plan. A plan. That's it. Okay. That's all this is is a plan. Now, do you think that when we plan the weeks out like this? Do you think it goes exactly as this is laid out? No, heck no, right? What did Moose just say? He's got doctors calling, his mom's calling. Things are happening, right? We got to be nimble. We have to move. We got to go with the flow, right? Things change. But if we're not planning out our weeks the week before, I promise you, you're going to get caught. I'll be, I'll be vulnerable right now because, like I said, we practice what we preach. Two weeks ago, I, I I didn't, I had stuff going on with my family Sunday night. I didn't do my schedule. I was going to do it Monday. Didn't do it Monday because as we all know, things get rolling through the week, right? And so what happened was Thursday, I had two meetings that were so close together. They overlapped and it was a little embarrassing. So I got caught. So whatever number you're at, this will help take you closer to a 10. And I ask you, the days that you're not a 10, what is that costing you? Notice I said what and not how much, because for some of you, it's not money. For some of you, it is money, a lot of money. But for some of you, not being a 10 might be your health, could be relationships, your overall well-being, your sense of peace, right? Our coaches work with you on helping you find out what to eliminate, automate, and delegate from your schedule. We found hundreds of hours, people, in two months of time. I've helped clients find 10 extra hours, 20 extra hours in weeks. What could you do with an extra 10 to 20 hours of quote unquote open time? It's not free time. We're going to plug something in there, but what could you do with that amount of time? So top producers take action now. The number one killer of success in the world today. Anyone know? Procrastination. You got it, baby. Let's go. Procrastination. 
We call it something worse. We call it creative avoidance. Okay. So, you know, <clears throat> what do we do? We have meetings like this. And, and I really hope everybody's at least so far taken away something from, from our presentation, an area that you can get better at, an area that you strive to improve in the sales cycle. Which habit is it for you? Student of the game, do you have problems with your self-talk? What about taking action now? Which one is it for you? There's no wrong answer. It's whatever's right for you. But what happens? We we have these meetings and we're like, you know what? I don't remember what's his face, but he did have something good to say about planning out my week. I'm going to do that. But first, I'm going to go get some coffee. And then I'm going to go to the bathroom. And then I'm going to grab a sandwich. Right after that, I'm going to get to doing this. What are we doing? We're creative, of, creatively avoiding the very thing that we said that we were going to take action on. So the good news is, folks, is whether it's student of the game for you, whether you need to guard your self-talk or take action now, whichever habit that you need to strengthen, it's doable. All these are, are learnable skills that we can get better at. And I know that each and every one of you can, can there's more within you. Okay, do y'all know that? Do y'all believe in what you're doing? Do y'all know that, that, you know, what you're doing out there is helping others in some form or fashion? I don't know what all of your careers are, but I do know that y'all are helping people and people need the help. So whichever one it is for you, just, just make me this promise. Can everybody at least tell me that they're going to commit to doing it? Whichever one it is for you, stood in the game, self-talk or take action, go start today. Today's a new day. Get better at it. Right? The end of our story hasn't been written yet, has it? Every day we get out of bed, put two feet on the ground. We're, we're in, it's another page in our story. So whatever you've been up till now, however you've been, if there's areas that you know you need growth around, let's do it. Let's start today. So let's talk real quick about the power perspective. So I'm going to show you a slide. I'm going to give you a few seconds. I want you to count the number of Fs that you see. Okay? Ready? Go. All right. Put it in the chat or just shout out. How many Fs did, did you all see? There. Thank you. Anyone else, Dan? Uh, we have numbers across the board. So we have four, three, four, three, four, five, three, okay. uh, three, Fair. two, I guess six, maybe four. Whoa. All right. There's six. Hey. Okay. These six Fs were always there. Some people think we tricked the slide. It's the same slide. <laughs> A lot of people miss the O's. So why is this important? This is the power of perspective. And this is having somebody else have your back and looking over your business. While you're so busy, caught up in your business, right? Sometimes you need somebody else, somebody else's perspective to, to look down and help you see, spot your blind areas. So right now, who at least uh, is open to hearing about our coaching program? Just a little bit about it. Okay. So it's called Top Producer's Edge. Uh, this is our, our basic uh, program. There's Manager's Edge. We have Elite and Executive Coaching as well. Um, like I said, Coach 
everyone from individuals, just top producers to Fortune 500 CEOs and everyone in between. But top producers edge, what does it do for the individual? It's gonna increase their income. We polled 20,000 clients, month one to month 12, because we know that if we see you through every season of your business, then we're gonna see these kinds of results in your income. And if it's 46% income, what does that mean for your revenue as a company? We're gonna multiply your time. Again, for some people, it's not about money. But we had, uh, what is it, President Iron Tribe told us, said, look, look guys, I don't care. The fact that I'm making more money is great. But the fact that I'm now spending more time with my 16-year-old son means more to me than you'll ever know. And the third thing is it's going to increase your confidence. You're going to be competent, confident in a variety of situations. When we're learning and we're growing, don't we feel good about ourselves? And if we're not, how do, how do you feel? I venture to say, if you're not growing, if you're not learning, if you're not getting better, then you're going backwards. You're actually getting worse because your competition is, right? There's people out there that are doing the work behind the scenes that are getting better, that are perfecting and honing their skills, to get better at their craft. So what's included? I'm just going to give you all some basic information everybody wants to know what is what's entailed in your coaching program so ours is one-on-one -on -one coaching you're not on a call with 10 other people or three other people or two other people it's one-on-one -on -one coaching it's not a one-size-fits-all it's a 45-minute conversation every other week you have 50 supplemental modules that you're going to go through um you know some people cover 10 some people get through 20 some people cover it's different for everyone right? Time management is a large one that we work on with a lot of people. You're going to get online learning videos. You're actually going to have an app. You're going to have a username and password that you can log on and access your data anytime, anywhere. And a lot of times these videos, when I, my coaching clients, my personal one, it, I, I'm like, I get them tell me, say, hey, Brandon, you know, my buddy Jeff told me, said, hey, look, I really enjoyed our session uh, on, you know, asking for referrals. I've gotten much better at it. I've got my team better at it, but I really liked the video by Dave Brown. I'm like, thanks, man. I'll take that as a compliment, but kudos to Dave, right? Critical success factors. You, you all know them as KPIs, key, key performance indicators. We call them critical success factors. These are the things that you need to be tracking on a daily basis and putting in your numbers so that we know exactly how to help you. If we don't know a problem exists, you know, how can we help? But we know that if you're making tons of calls, not setting appointments, that tells us one thing. If you're making tons of calls, setting tons of appointments and not closing, that tells us something else, so on and so forth. So CSS really are the roadmap to taking you to your destination and accomplishing the goals that you want and ultimately your vision. So there's really three things. Look, we're not right for everyone and everyone is not right for Southwestern Consulting and that is okay. We ask you to be three things. Can you be coachable? Can you truly be coached by somebody maybe younger than you, older than you? Uh, maybe somebody not from your industry, but somebody that does know sales and knows how to help you, knows how to have that, that perspective and look in on your business with you, spot your blind spots, and help you get better. Can you be committed, not for life, 12 months? Again, we know that if we see you through every season of your business, then we're gonna see the kinds of results, at least the average results, if not better. And are you ready to change? A lot of people say they're, they wanna change, but are you really willing to do what is necessary to step outside of your comfort zone just a little bit and make some changes. Okay. 
So right now, I, I just want everybody, thank you all for, for spending this time with me. Uh, what an honor to, to speak to such a, a prestigious group today. Uh, I thank you all. I know you all are very busy and have other places and things you could be doing. So thank you for spending it with me. And I hope everybody has taken away, again, at least one piece that you can implement in your practice or with your team to get better. Let's just get 1% better. 1% better each day. By the end of the year, you're 36% better, right? Atomic habits. But if we're not growing, if we're not doing anything and we're staying the same, at the end of the year, it's a zero, right? So, so right now, you're in one of three categories. So you can text me or put it in the chat. I need your name. And if you do put it in the chat, just put, put uh, your number or you can text it to me. A one. So a one is you're, you would love to talk to us about our coaching program, what it entails, and a business action plan session with me and my partner, Billy Joe, who I apologize couldn't be here today. She's on her way back from uh, vacation. But it, it doesn't cost you all a dime, okay? It, it's complimentary to you. We, we want to be here to serve you and help you. So put a one if you're interested in coaching. Two is you're interested in the workshop that I just did. We do this workshop for a lot of sales groups, sales teams out there. If you lead a team of five or more salespeople, let us know. I would be happy to talk to you more about coming out and serving you, again, as a complimentary service to this, this group. And a three is, Brandon, you did a, a decent job. You're an okay dude, but not today. It's not for me. And now at this time, I guess I will open it up to... Um, we got a few minutes, a couple of questions. If it's regarding coaching, I would prefer that we take that offline. So it, sometimes it'll just, sometimes it gets in the weeds. That's all. And before we open up Q&A, I would uh, encourage everyone, if you haven't already seen me spamming this in the chat throughout the meeting, I'm going to go ahead and drop it in here one more time. There's a link if you want to be on a list of today's participants and share your information, feel free to fill out this form and you will receive a copy, okay? Perfect, thank you, Dan. And I can promise you, if you if you have questions and you text me, you, you have my word, I, I will just answer your question and, and that'll be all, you know, I won't bug you. Brandon, I have a question. This is Lisa Rosenfeld. So I know you're, uh, and I may have missed a little bit on this, but um, you know, when you were saying you want a yes or a no or not a maybe, so mm -hmm. you really don't, I mean, do you think there's ever times that people are just really a maybe? Absolutely. I mean, there's, there's going to be times where it's unavoidable. The goal is we want to take those first steps of, of doing the background information, you know, and when we're sitting down with them, building the rapport and asking them the right questions. That's really what it's all about is asking the right questions, listening, cl asking clarifying questions and listening more than we talk to really understand what their need is. And when we truly understand what somebody's need is for our service or a product, we're then gonna be able to present a good solid solution. Therefore cutting down on the maybes. It should be we tell people a lot of times, look, coaching isn't rocket science. It's it's coaching. What it, what is a coach's job is to help people be be there be at their best, right? Say, come on, let's go, let's get them. Be be positivity in your corner. Let's rock this. You got this. Give you confidence and help you with with actual um, you know skills that and principles that stem from our you know century and a half year old company. And so, yeah, you're, you're going to get some maybes, of course, it's, it's, but the goal is to cut them down from getting maybe all the time to getting them this much, if that helps. Okay. Right. Thank, Thank you, Lisa. You. Good question. That's a great question. 
And if anybody has a question they'd like to drop in the chat, I'm happy to read it uh, out loud. Or feel free to unmute yourself. Daniela, I think someone put in, they wanted to they wanted to know if he could put the first slide back up again. Oh, I, sure. I think that's what someone said. The, I doubt it's the very first one. It could be, but the first. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is the first slide. <laughs> Could you go one more? It was something with the skills and the. <coughs> oh. There was a, yeah, that one. I was uh, missing one of so those. Not, so you got to have skills, right? But it's not good enough just to be a skilled salesperson. You can have all the skills in the world, but without motivation, are you really going to sell much? And then without systems, that's what ties it together. A lot of times people's problem is a breakdown of their systems. My partner, Billy Joe, is uh, an expert at systems. She is a master. And we're about changing people's habits through accountability. Wonderful. Anyway. Thank you so much, Brandon. Yeah. Thank you all. Any other questions, thoughts? Just wanted to say that there will be a replay available in a few days of uh, today's presentation. And again, thank you, Brandon, so much for having this. This was awesome. Um, so those of you asking for a copy of the presentation, I mean, Brandon, I leave that up to you. But again, we will have the yeah. replay available. Yeah, I just watch the replay. It's a proprietary presentation, but uh, I'm happy to share with you any of the principles offline. Not a problem. So thank you all. I really appreciate it. Thank you for the opportunity to serve each and every one of you. And I hope you all have a blessed day. Brandon, thank you, buddy. Really appreciate it. And uh, for all that have been on this call today, thank you. Really appreciate it. God bless. Thanks, Brandon. Thanks, have Brandon. A, have a great day, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.